Hi everyone, I'm going to continue the series of the famous Safadi Rabbanim. We're in Aleppo, Syria, Khalab territory today. On the 4th of Tevet, it's going to be the Hulula of a very great rabbi. His name was Rabbi Chaim Shaul Dwek HaKohen Zeche Tzadik Libracha. He was born around the year, English year, 1857-1858, and he passed away in 1933. 90 years from the time of recording, because we're now naturally in 2023. He would become a, a head rabbi in Aleppo before moving to Israel and becoming the Rosh Hashiva of the famous Yeshivat Bet El, which had many, many great uh, rabbanim, uh, great Kabbalists, and also the famous Yeshiva Rehobot, Hanahar uh, Yeshiva, which was also uh, famed for the great amount of Kabbalists they had over there. And he was a mastermind of the Torah. He knew pretty much everything about her. And he was a great, great, great Kabbalist also. In fact, he came from a very, very great lineage. His father was Rabbi Shaul Ezra Kohen Dweck, who was at one stage a chief rabbi of Aleppo. And also he was author of the great Torah work called the Emet Me'aret also. And he was a very, very great rabbi. So uh, to give, let's uh, go through his life a little bit. In his youth, Rabbi, Sha- uh, Rabbi Chaim Shaul Dweck HaKohen actually learned under the auspices of a great Rabbi, Rabbi Mordechai Abadi and also Rabbi Eliyahu Mashan and uh, many other great Torah scholars. In the year 1887, he actually became a head rabbi in Aleppo, in Khalab, and wrote many, many different great books while he was there. But at that st- st- stage in time when he was uh, the head rabbi in Aleppo, where remember in Aleppo, in uh, Syria, there was a very, very great uh, Torah Jewish community over there. Uh, very, very famed for, and I'd recommend everyone to research about the history of the Syrian Jews. There's a lot of good books within regards to that. But he longed to move to Israel. He really, really wanted to move to Israel. And eventually, that wish came true from one of his students at the time, Rabbi Ezra Harari Raful. He eventually emigrated several years later, finally, to Israel with a group of rabbis from Khalab. He wasn't the only one over there. There was a group of rabbis, including the famous Rabbi Yom Tov Yadid Halevi and also Rabbi Shaul Katzin. And they settled in Jerusalem. And for around six years, he was a leader of the famous Yeshivat Bet El Yeshiva in, in the old city of Jerusalem. And that, remember that, that Yeshiva itself had many, many great Kabbalists, many great uh, Rabbonim. Also over there was one of the most famous yeshivas in Israel, certainly in modern Israel history also. And uh, he, after spending time there, he would uh, later on uh, actually become the Rosh Yeshiva, also of the famous Rehobot Hanar Yeshiva in the Bukharian neighborhood. Around the year 1896 this was, naturally because he moved to Israel in 1890, spent six years in Yeshiva Bet El. He was there later and become a very, very great, uh, was a very great place. Many, many different students over there. And we'll go through some of his students in a minute. Also, I'll, I'll name some of his students now. He, if you see the list of the students he actually had, it was, uh, you wouldn't get uh, finer students pretty much than that. Some of the, among the Talmudim, Talmudim with this uh, huge galaxy of Rabbanim list. Harav Yom Tov Yedid Halevi, Rav Salomon Eliyahu. Also, Rabbi Yaakov Chaim Sofer, the famous uh, author of the book, The Kafa Chaim, which many people will have in their households uh, nowadays and many people will learn from nowadays. Harab Yeshayahu Asher Zelik Margaliot. That can be pronounced other ways. Also, Harab Ezra Harari Raful, who is another great rabbi from Khalab, who was his student, who I actually did a video on his Hilula, which only happened to be uh, last week. His Hilula was, I believe it was on the first day of Hanukkah. So that was one of his students also. Rab Nisim Nachum, Rab Ben Sion Chazan, also another great rabbi. Rab Yisrael Yitzchak Reisman, and also Rab Moshe Yair Weinstock, and Rab Shlomo Mashiach, also, and Rab Rachmim David Sharim, also a very, very, very great uh, town with him he had. Naturally, he was uh, a great rabbi in Khalab and also in these various yeshivot in uh, Syria. And later stage, just before he had passed, uh, 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 before he passed away, he lost his eyesight, but the Torah memory he had was absolutely incredible. He knew pretty much the whole of the Torah. Balpeh. They, uh, he actually wrote a lot, lot, lot of books, a lot of different great colossal works also, all, all, including I'll give you a, uh, a, uh, a snippet of some of the great uh, works he did. The A4 Shlema, 
which was also a, a composition of the Otsrot HaChaim from Rabbi, uh, from the famous Rabbi. Uh, another book that he had written was Benayahu Ben Yehoyedaya, which was a Sidur from Rav Shalom Shrabi, the great Rabbi, the Rosh Hashanah Kadosh. The Harot HaRav HaSadeh, the Harot HaRav HaSadeh, there was different uh, composi- compositions of this great book. Also the Hidushei HaRav HaSadeh, also which was a sefer on the Kabbalist teachings of Sfat Emet from Rabbi, uh, from his Rabbi actually, who I mentioned just before, Rabbi Eliyahu Mishan, and also the Sar Shalom also, which was uh, also a very great uh, Torah work. Also, he also did a Perush. On- he also did a famous uh, Perush also on the Shir HaShirim, and he passed away in the English year 1933, and he was buried in the uh, Harazetim in Jerusalem, in uh, Yerushalayim Ir Kodesh. Also, naturally, we call that the Mount of Olives. Uh, uh, that-